have you come to appreciate a powerful desire within you that is yet not quite fulfilled? When you are there, when you are feeling the pleasure of a new desire that is born powerfully within you, and it has not yet manifested, but it is born within you, and you are satisfied in the incompletion of it, and exhilarated and eager about the unfolding of it, even though it is not yet unfolded. In other words, it is a dream that is alive. It is something that you truly want. When you come to this place that the new idea is within you and the desire is clearly focused and the manifestation has not yet occurred and you are still content in the unfulfillment of it, now you are in this perfect place of creating where you are feeling contentment where you are and yet eager for the expansion. And it is that sort of feeling place that we're wanting to help you discover little by little. In other words, there are endless processes that you can utilize in order to bring yourself to that place. The reason that it is so important and the reason that we like to begin there is because so often we see our physical friends utilizing contrast in exactly the way you've intended when you made the decision to come forth into these magnificent bodies to begin with. You knew that you would be leading edge creators and you knew that the contrast or the variety of this time-space reality would be the perfect environment to give birth to the new desire within you. Sometimes we see you utilizing the contrast exactly as you have intended and we can feel within you the rocket of desire being born, the continual clarification of that which you are wanting. And so the new desire is born within you and then for a moment you feel exhilaration as you give birth to the desire but then you stand in the not having of it, in what feels like the lack of it, what feels like the discouragement of not having it, and you say, oh, why does this thing that I want so much not come to me? And we're wanting you to realize that in that discouraged feeling place, you are offering a vibration that is incompatible with the desire that you have given birth to. So if the place you are standing is incompatible with the desire you have given birth to, law of attraction, which matches all things perfectly, cannot bring it to you. Some of you have heard us talking about Jerry and Esther's monster bus. They have a 40-foot motor coach that they are moving about in. And on the top of the motor coach is a satellite dish. And so when they come into a campground, Esther will say to Jerry, where is Houston? They'll be in Albany, New York. She will say, which way is Houston? They'll be in Florida. She'll say, which way is Houston? Because the satellite that is beaming to their dish is somewhere over Houston. So when she gets an idea of where Houston is, then she can tell right away whether there's going to be a tree in the way or a building in the way, something that might be blocking her dish from the beaming satellite. And then she will push a button inside the coach which will establish the elevation of the dish. They have a chart that tells them, depending on where they are, what the elevation should be. And then the satellite dish begins to turn around on top of the motor home until it locks in to the satellite somewhere over Houston. Now, if Esther puts the wrong elevation on the dish and it's pointing too low in the horizon or too high in the horizon, that little satellite dish will work its heart out. It would work all night long if she would ask it to, and it has. <laughs> and it will never lock on to the signal. What we're getting at here is that in this business of deliberate creation, in this universal vibrational creative field in which you are all creating, there are three things that you're wanting to be aware of for the completion of your creation. Two of them are taken care of without your conscious awareness. It is the third thing that is your part, and that's what we will primarily talk about here today. The first part of the three-part process or triad of deliberate creation is ask. In your physical format, you say ask and it is given. And there are no truer words that you have ever spoken with your human tongue. Because when you ask, 
whether it is in a full conscious feeling state or whether it is in a subliminal, even a cellular state of asking, any time you ask, it is always given. So the first phase of this is ask. The second part of this is the answering or the universal yielding, the answering to what you are asking. And that always takes place. It is not something that you need to be even aware of. It is not something that you need to do anything about. When you ask, it is always given. So many of our physical friends then would say, well, if I'm asking and the universe is giving, then where is it? Why is it not happening? Why do I have this thing I do not want in my experience? Or why do I not have this thing that I do want in my experience? And we say it is because the third thing is out of whack. And that is, you must be in the receiving mode to that which you are asking for. And so liken to the satellite. If the satellite is not in the receiving mode, it can spin and spin and spin and spin and spin and spin and spin. It could work all day, all night, like so many of you do. It could put forth endless action and effort. It could put so much effort forth that its bearings would burn out. Some of you have done that too. But unless you are in the receiving mode, your asking and the universal answering is not a personal, gratifying experience to you. And that really is what this workshop is about. For some time we have called this gathering the Science of Deliberate Creation. We think it is a wonderful title because it talks about the ever-evolving understanding of how universal forces work. But we are giving it a new title these days as we call it the Art of Allowing. And today even a more refined title as we say, are you in the receiving mode? Are you letting it in? Do you have yourself set to a vibration that is a match to your own desire? The difference between you and the analogy with the satellite is that the satellite is beaming a signal that you must match if you are wanting to receive it. You know about that with your radio tuners too. Where in the science of deliberate creation, you are the launching of the satellite and the setting of the tuner. In other words, you offer the rocket of desire which establishes what is desired, but then you must be a vibrational match to your own desire in order for the universe to be able to fulfill it to you. Now let's clarify those words a little more clearly. Because the universe is always doing its part. You ask, the universe always answers. That is never a question. There is never someone saying, oh well, he was asking before, but he wasn't listening, so now let's let him suffer a little bit. Let's let him really know what is important. There is no price to be paid. There is only the vibrational matching, because law of attraction says that which is likened to itself is drawn. So what happens as you are moving through your day-to-day -day experience, the contrast helps you to establish eternally evolving rockets of desires, never-ending rockets of desires. And your work then must always be, we could say, your work must then always and only be the alignment of your own vibration to your own desire. And it is a wonderful thing when you get the hang of how this works because the emotions within you are always telling you whether or not you are a vibrational match to your own desire or not. You can tell by the way you feel. The better you feel, the more in alignment you are. The worse you feel, the more out of alignment you are. And so it is really about setting yourself into vibrational harmony with that which feels good. So you'll hear us offering to you some words today, very often. They are the words that we would encourage you to ask yourself on a regular basis, maybe hundreds of times in every day, am I letting it in? Am I letting it in? Letting what in? Letting all that I consider to be good in. Letting life force in. You could call it creative life force, God force. Am I letting it in? Am I holding myself in vibrational harmony with those things that I've identified that I'm wanting to experience? How come this thing that I want does not come to me? And we say the only reason that something that you want is not coming to you is that you are holding yourself in vibrational harmony with something other than what you want. And the good news is that every single time you're doing it, every single time without exception, you are feeling something less than positive emotion when it happens. 
So if you are asking yourself on a fairly regular basis, you know, two or three hundred or a thousand times every day, <laughs> if you're catching yourself in the act of doing it now, it won't take you 30 days of being aware that you're doing it now to stop doing it now. In other words, once you realize what the receiving mode feels like, it is such an easy thing to hold yourself in vibrational harmony with the well-being that is natural to you. And that is what the science of deliberate creation is about. You are vibrational beings much more than you are flesh, blood, and bone beings. You are more vibrational. You are more electrical than you are anything else. And the way that you read the vibration of your being is through your emotions. Your emotions tell you everything that you will ever need to know about your relationship with your source energy. And we can think of anything that is more significant for you to be aware of than your relationship with your source energy because the source energy is life itself. When you are fully connected to and fully allowing source energy, you are the extension of that. You are that blended being. You are allowing the whole of you to flow through and live this physical experience. And in that state of being, eagerness would be your most common emotion. You would vacillate between saying things like, ooh, this is interesting, to ooh, this is satisfying, to ooh, don't you love that, to ooh, I'm really enjoying this, to ooh, this is interesting, to ooh, this is satisfying. In other words, all of those feelings of life-giving emotion that are the natural way that you are and the way you felt as you came forth into this physical experience to begin with and the way you are normally to feel and the way you will always feel once you get the hang of catching yourself in the mode of doing that thing you do that keeps all of that from happening.